This is the resume. Oh, wait, no, that's not the resume. This is the resume that got me interviews at Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Reddit, and TikTok. Most resumes look exactly the same nowadays, so you really have to put in extra effort in order to stand out to recruiters and land that job. Most people just don't know how to do that. So this got me thinking, why not share my resume that got me into Microsoft with the people of the internet? Uh, that's you guys. But not only that, I recently did a resume roasting session on my Discord server where I had people submit their resumes and agree to be publicly roasted in the name of learning. But little did they know that I actually slipped my resume into the pile so that I could get roasted as well. And you're not gonna believe what people had to say, so let's get started. The first thing that happens when you submit your resume to an online job application is that a recruiter reads it, right? Actually, that's wrong. The ATS system, or the application tracking system, picks it up first, and it scans the resume for certain keywords. When I I made my resume, I had to actually make sure that it was filled with keywords that were actually relevant to the job description. You're not expected to know the exact technologies that are listed on the job requirements, but you are expected to know something that's equivalent or similar to those job requirements. Now we're going to see how you can include those keywords from the job description into your resume as well. So let's look at the senior software engineering role for Microsoft. It looks like they're looking for experience with C or C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, or Python. Also just looking at the overview, the job itself will be required required to use Azure Components, C Sharp, Angular, Azure SQL, Queues, Azure Storage, and Azure Functions. Let's go ahead and look at my resume just to see how it matches up in comparison. So you can see here that I've actually listed the frameworks, technologies, and languages that I've used. They don't exactly match with the job requirements, but the important thing is to see that they're transferable. So if you have some sort of high-level object-oriented programming language such as Java or Kotlin, that'll directly translate to a job that requires something like C Sharp because it's easy to kind of translate those skills. And then the same thing with cloud services. So we use an abstracted version of GCP and that would basically translate to using Azure. Okay, okay, so that's great and all. You can add languages to your resume that fit the job description. But what if you don't even know a language really well yet? Well, I've actually come up with a Kotlin course. Just check out my site and you can get on the wait list as soon as possible. There are a limited number of seats so you don't wanna miss out on this opportunity. If you don't know what Kotlin is, Kotlin is basically just a better version of Java, so it is an object-oriented programming language, and you can learn functional programming with it as well. And if you want to be an Android developer one day, that'll give you a serious edge. Using Android Studio with Kotlin, ugh, they are the best combination. This course is not like other courses. So you do have the video lectures just like a normal course, but then we've also added animations, so it makes it easier to visualize what's going on. Not only that, but I've also added practice problems and solutions, as well as quizzes to hold yourself accountable for each module. And what if you get stuck? Well, we have a Discord community of over 1,500 people where you can come ask questions, and sometimes I'll even be there to respond to your questions as well. And not only that, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll actually see that I have a free Kotlin guide. It's free. So make sure to download it as soon as possible because that is also only available for a limited time. All right, back to the video. The important thing is showing quantifiable results on your resume. Take the time to assess how you've positively impacted people. The percentage decrease of CPU usage that your changes made or even the percentage increase of speed at which you can handle requests. This is gold to a recruiter. They really like to see that you properly assess the impact that you made at a company. I talked about how I built out a testing library with the JDBDT framework, and then I also talked about the impact. So this decoupled the need for dependency on the repository layer to insert records to test against beforehand. Once the resume does go through the ATS system, a real person will actually look at it. And this is what a hiring manager from Microsoft had to say about the resume. I mean, if the outcome is to get a job at Microsoft, I would recommend not just creating a general purpose resume and going spamming it out. We can even see that this person in, in our tool, this person applied for a thousand positions. Really helps if there's something that's personalized that says, hey, I really interested in engineering systems and, and even security and compliance and how this is being done. That does make you stand out just showing it that you paid attention to what the job was and showed that this is something that you would be interested in. You also want to make sure to format your resume in a way that's really readable to the recruiter. You can see that I've listed my contact information here, my skills here, and then my work experience here. At the very end, I end up listing my personal projects that I built too. If you're a student, you want to make sure to add details on your personal projects if you don't have a lot of work experience. But what if I told you that the biggest part of my portfolio wasn't just my resume, it was actually my LinkedIn profile. This is the LinkedIn profile that caught the eye of a Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Reddit, LinkedIn, and TikTok recruiters. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at my LinkedIn profile. Now, the main 
main thing is the experience, kind of like I talked about with the resume. So I do have here, for example, I was a software developer at Advantage Analytics. Now this was the startup that I worked for right after I got out of college, but I don't even think this was the experience that recruiters really like to see. They probably liked my target experience. And I talked about this experience pretty in depth. So you can see here how long <laughs> this experience is. Now you don't have to make yours this long. I talked about what that exactly entailed. I moved through two different teams in a rotational program. You know, I kind of just talked about what I did. Again, I haven't quite shown the impact. And those are the things that I would have liked to add on my LinkedIn. You might not have enough time or space to actually explain what you did in depth on your resume. So your LinkedIn profile is a perfect way to do that. And then here in terms of leadership, I also had that I was a founder of a company that invests in townhouses. And that's probably more of a leadership sort of position that they like to see. So I kind of talked about my experiences. So I have a volunteering section here, but endorsements. Endorsements is also big. You can get endorsed for different things. I haven't really spent a ton of time in this, but my biggest thing are recommendations. Make sure that you're asking coworkers to give you recommendations on LinkedIn. I think this is a huge part of the process. Obviously, whoever you ask is probably not going to give you a terrible recommendation, but it's about what they say. Do they give enough details? Were they really involved in the work that you did? Did they see how you thrived? Because I can tell when there's a difference between someone who really takes the time to talk about a person's work and really showcase that, hey, they did a great job versus like, I'm just writing this recommendation because they asked me to. Nowadays, resumes aren't enough to showcase your skills. You also need a searchable business presence online. You should probably talk to recruiters on LinkedIn. Recruiters might reach out to you and stuff or you can reach out to recruiters. Tell them that you're looking for events and uh, some hiring opportunities. Help make it easy for them to find you and book you at these events. They get paid for getting you booked and especially if you get hired and that's why they're going out there and looking for people. So keep those contacts warm if you're looking for a job. If you haven't heard, recruiters have a different version of LinkedIn that they used to search and filter for people that they think would do well in the interviews. So now we're going to look at something that no one has really shown before. And even I don't have access to this, but I have seen the recruiter version of LinkedIn before. So I kind of want to explain to you guys how it works. Similar to the resume ATS system where it filters for certain keywords, a recruiter can actually filter on the left hand side based on what they're looking for. So they can check for a person's years of experience. They can filter for what company a person has worked at. They can filter for the roles that they've been in, all different sorts of things. And then on the right side, you see a bunch of profiles that have popped up. So a lot of recruiters actually do look for people in a specific location. So if they're trying to fill a role, even if it's remote, sometimes they do tend to look in the area that they're filling the role in. But anyways, other than that, try to make sure that your LinkedIn profile matches these filtering processes. So people can also search for certain keywords in this filter. They can search for Java, Python, any sort of tech stack. So make sure that you're also putting the correct technologies that you've worked on multiple times in your LinkedIn profile as well. At this point, I've shown you how I've crafted my resume and LinkedIn profile, but you guys have something that I didn't at the time of interviewing at Microsoft, and that's AI. Use that to your advantage. So we're going to go ahead and use this AI resume builder that I found online. I think it's extremely helpful. I went through a few of the steps earlier and it's pretty seamless. Now we're going to go ahead and build our resume. Okay, so you can choose between creating a new resume from scratch or if you already have a resume. So I'm going to do that section, already have a resume, and then go to the next. So it applied a template and then you can see on the right that this is kind of what it looks like. I'll, I'll show you guys a preview. So this is the template that I chose. Obviously it doesn't look perfect, but it's something to start off with, especially because this template was a lot better than what I had as my resume. So if we go next to the work history, you can also say, you know, I'm job seeking or you're just doing this for a different reason. So I'll say job seeking and go to the next section. And then here again, it shows where I've worked and it says software developer remote and software engineer target corp. So it doesn't have my Microsoft position here yet. So I'd probably end up adding it. It looks like it wasn't able to really fully read that section. So you want to make sure that you're actually going through and verifying that it has the information you need, but it gives you a very structured way of creating a resume without you having to do it from scratch. So I'll say I have a bachelor's degree. Next, it gives you some recommendations for software developer as well. So you can see that experts recommend saying you're a web-based software engineer or a SQL expertise. So it gives you options as to what skills you should choose. You go to the summary. They actually recommend different summaries that you can add in your CV or in your resume as well. And I'm not going to add a summary, so I'm going to go to the next section. And then again, if you have anything else to add, like a website, portfolio, certifications, additional information, you can add that as well. And then ta-da, this is kind of what my resume looks like, which is pretty cool that I was able to do that. And then you can also choose between different 
different templates, so it'll update it. So I really like this template. Again, this is very long. I wouldn't usually have a resume this long, so I would cut it down. And again, you can use ChatGPT at your disposal as well. Now, I promised you guys a resume roast. Did I not? During one of our resume roasting sessions, I actually slipped my resume into the mix. I wanted to get a real review of the resume that I used when I first applied to Microsoft. So what do you guys see that could be fixed or something that doesn't look right? Too much points in the experience. Okay, anything else that you see about this that stands out? Is it something like the text are very plain, like it's always left to right? Yes, I think, you know, it, it is very standard in terms of a resume. There isn't much creativity going on. This person could probably stand to have, uh, instead of maybe their technical skills where it's lined up here, maybe they could have their education and technical skills centered more. Usually what I like to say is the professional experience is really important and that's what companies are looking at. So I like to have the professional experience first and then the technical skills and personal projects can come afterwards. Okay, you guys are being very nice in this resume roast. <laughs> Okay, so clearly there were points on my resume that could have been updated, but overall, it seems like people thought it was pretty effective. At the end of the day, the biggest indicator of a good resume is something that showcases the technical experiences that you had in a way that actually created impact for someone else. It also has to be communicated really well, because this will show how good you are at relaying information to other people that may be non-technical. Writing a good resume takes experience, but building your presence on LinkedIn, creating personal projects, and making network connections are all a piece of the puzzle when it comes to landing that coveted interview or getting noticed by those big tech recruiters. Last thing I want to say is believe in yourself. You've already started to put in the work to learn a new skill. Now it's just about presenting your skills to others and making a really good first impression.